Embryonic stem cells, the most pluripotent of all stem cells, are derived from the embryos generated by in vitro fertilization. When fertilization is successful, the sperm head bearing the nucleus enters the egg while the tail is left behind. The egg divides first into two cells, then into four. With more division, a multicellular ball of cells known as blastocyst is formed. If you could look into the blastocyst with X-ray eyes, you discover that it is a hollow ball made up of two cells type. An outer layer, the trophoblast, which eventually forms the placenta, and the inner clusters of cells known as the inner cell mass. The embryo is derived from the cells of inner cell mass. It is possible to pick up these embryonic stem cells with a pipette and transfer them to petri dish for culturing. Under appropriate culture conditions, these embryonic stem cells divide or self-renewed and the cell mass grows. Sometimes pockets of cells will stop dividing and begin to differentiate spontaneously. Group of cells may develop properties of mature bone cells or a pancreatic cells. Other develop into muscle cells that can contract and still other into nerve cells. Because they have the potential to become a wide variety of specialized cells, embryonic stem cells are described as pluripotent. Pluripotency is one of the two key features of embryonic stem cells. The second key feature of embryonic stem cells is their ability to divide or self-renew indefinitely while retaining their undifferentiated pluripotent state. Small group of cells can first be grown in petri dish but as the number increases, the population can be further expanded by growing in larger tissue culture flask. You can tell that the cells are growing because the tissue culture medium turns from pink to yellow orange, indicating a drop in pH. Cells from the single flask concede many flasks. In this way, unlimited number of undifferentiated pluripotent stem cells can be produced. Embryonic stem cells technology has the potential to treat conditions such as diabetes, Parkinson's disease and spinal cord injury. Consider juvenile diabetes as an example. In this disease, also known as type 1 diabetes, the immune system destroys insulin-producing cells of the pancreas. Insulin-producing cells called beta cells are normally found within the cell clusters called islet of Langerhans. Beta cells function in the following way. After a meal, glucose increases in bloodstream. Beta cells detect this glucose and release insulin into the bloodstream. Insulin then circulate throughout the body. Insulin target many tissues in the body including muscle cells. Insulin binds to receptors on muscle cells, signaling the cells to take in glucose. The cell responds by increasing the transport of glucose into the cells. In type 1 diabetes, the immune system destroys the beta cells. Without insulin, cells cannot take glucose from the bloodstream and blood glucose level remain high. Type 1 diabetes is currently treated with a daily blood testing and insulin injection. For diabetics, the hopes that the embryonic stem cells can be coped into differentiating into functional beta cells or into entire islet of Langerhans. These beta cells or islet were then introduced into people with a type 1 diabetes to restore the ability to produce insulin. Although many hurdles must be overcome before a cure is possible, a palatable supply of functioning beta cells would be a boon for the people of type 1 diabetes.
Stem cells can be obtained from many sources, but not all stem cells are equal. Some stem cells are said to be pluripotent, that is, they have the ability to develop into many different cells type of the body. Others are more restricted in the types of cells they can become. The goal of cell replacement therapy is to use this cell for transplantation to replace tissues and to restore function. Because they have the potential to become such a wide variety of specialized cells, embryonic stem cells are described as pluripotent. When transplanting embryonic stem cells derived from the embryo obtained by in vitro fertilization, the genetic background of ES cell in the dish will be different from the genetic background of the patient. Therefore, the tissue and the organ derived from these cells will also have a different genetic background from the patients and this can lead to rejection of the transplanted tissue. The technique of somatic cell embryo transfer or SCENT might eliminate this problem, allowing for the generation of replacement cells that have the same genetic makeup of the patient. In somatic cells embryo transfer, the nucleus of the egg removed with it and the genetic material of the donor. Next, a biopsy is taken from the patient. For example, skin cells and the nucleus from the one of these cells bearing the patient genetic material is transferred into the empty egg. Following activation, the same sequence of events shown earlier takes place in the culture disc. Ending up with ES cell except that the ES cell have the same genetic background as that of the patient. In the same way, patient's specific ES cell line may someday be produced and used to generate cells and tissues for transplantation. The point is that these cells, tissues and organ will be genetically compatible with the patients and will not be rejected. Researcher will be able to develop in test drug that might prove the valuable in the treatment of the disease.